<laughs> you know they say about tourist season. Who's <laughs> one's better? Yours. <laughs> so, it's been pretty difficult trying to get time with some of the engineers this week. As with most startups, we have a small but mighty team of engineers working on a whole bunch of different releases. So it's just a really busy week for them. Luckily, we've managed to snag some time with an engineer later on today. So we'll be following her around, giving you some insight into what they actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. But for now, I'll be relying on our good old friend, ChatGPT, to give us a bit of an intro into what software engineering actually is. Explain software engineering. Software engineering is the process of designing, creating, testing and maintaining software programs. Think of it like building a house. You start with a plan, gather materials, put it all together, make sure it works properly and fix any problems over time. Hmm. In short, it's all about solving problems and making sure the software is reliable, efficient and meets the needs of the users. So yeah, question, what are you up to? What does any of this mean? So we had a back-end service that was doing onboarding, but okay. we wanted to make a bunch of changes. So we've essentially just created a whole new service and we're rolling that out to 10% of users today, mm -hmm. which means 10% of users who onboard today will be going through the new service oh. and some will be going through the old service and then we're just Basically monitoring to see if we're seeing any issues. If we see issues, we're going to roll it back, everyone back to the old service. Okay. Yeah. So the process that they go through to sign up, we've got a new version of that. Mm -hmm. We're testing that new version on 10% of people. Yeah. Is that like normal? Yeah, it's normally like an increased rollout. So we'll start yeah. with 10%, 50, 20, 30, 40, oh, okay. until we're at 100% okay. and see what issues happen. Yeah. So how long has it been live for? Two hours. What was it saying? We've got about five users who fully onboarded, which is yeah. good. Yeah. Still waiting and seeing. Yeah. The more users that we can get into the flow, the more quickly we'll find out what issues. There yeah. Are. This is a very specific thing we're doing today because it has been a release. Yeah. In general, there aren't always releases. Yeah. So what are you doing if you're not monitoring a release? Typically, as an engineer, your main piece of work is like product work, essentially working towards releasing a new feature or like oh. building the new feature. So I've got a couple of those this week that I also need to do. And then the other part of being an engineer is being on call. So on call basically means when members have issues, those issues are reported through to member support and then there's someone who's on hand at all times to fix whatever the issue is. Yes, so that's, part, that's one part of it. Okay. The other part is we also have like internal monitoring set up. For example, we have mm -hmm. event-driven architecture. If one service is taking a really long time to process uh, events from an, on a certain topic from another service, then when it hits a certain lag, yeah, yeah. then it will it'll go fail. off and it will tell us other more so called metrics, yeah, which are yeah. like if an endpoint is returning 500s a lot, then something's wrong. Returning uh, what? Like 500s, which is like a. What does that mean? So it means lots of things. So Wait, how do you remember all these status? How many status codes are there? 500 of them? There's the really common ones. Are like, these specific to Yonder? No, no, no. Interesting. These are like across backend. You know when you don't have internet? Yeah. And you go, oh, yeah. You go on and it's like 404. And the dinosaur comes up. Yes. Yeah. So 404 is a status code. I'm confused. Does, does this mean anything to you? Have you seen The Matrix? Yes. <laughs> the green and. The green and. Yeah, the, and. I just need some black sunglasses. That's what it looked literally. You're basically Trinity. You shouldn't sign any contracts on Mercury's contract. Contracts? Why? It's a time where communication and things get thrown into chaos. Right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, that explains basically everything. They're not, yeah. So, Amrita was supposed to be coming with me to shoot with the partner Bunhouse Disco today for lunch, but she is on call and, as such, has been called into a call. So I'm going to head down there first and we'll see if she can catch up a bit later.
Bro, you chose the right day to be doing a, a BTS video. I win, like, <laughs> I actually win. I win. So delicious. So, you let me into your world. I let you into my world. It's a good exchange. Whose world's better? Yours. <laughs> Yours, without a doubt. How did you find it? It was so good. Another question for you. You are an engineer. Yes. When did you decide you wanted to do engineering? How did you even find out what engineering was? When I was like 16, 17, I was super into Tumblr. I used to create, <laughs> this is really nerdy. I used to create like, um, the silly little like, HTML yeah. designs for like, the different like layouts on Tumblr, whatever. Crazy. Um, it was actually my dad, so shout out to my dad, um, who was like, well, you like, you like doing all of that in your spare times, so, like maybe you should do computer science. Um, and I liked maths, but yeah. I didn't want to do a maths degree. So I was like, kind of took a risk on it and was yeah. like, let me just try it. Yeah. Um, didn't really have much engineering or computer science background. Um, and went straight into a degree with it, got in and ended up really enjoying it. But at uni, I was definitely one of like seven girls on my course. Oh. Um, and I think naturally there are things that you face or issues that happen and it depends on company. I think Yonder's been really great in terms of inclusive inclusivity. And I think mm. the only thing about being a female engineer is I definitely sought my community from mm -hmm. university day one like i was going to a lot of like networking events to meet other female engineers yeah so that like a lot of my male um course mates probably didn't do yeah which i think honestly benefited me in a way because mm -hmm. i developed quite a big network and yeah. i met a lot of like companies and intro to in HR because of these events yeah um, but i was doing it purely because I don't really, I didn't know many female engineers and I wanted to see people who looked like me. Yeah. I think that's yeah. cool though. You're taking the fact that you were like a minority group in terms of gender or whatever and like using that to your advantage and like how that kind of gave you certain opportunities that other people didn't necessarily get. Yeah. It's really cool. It kind of is in a sense a driving factor for yeah. like, I've stayed an engineer this long because I've definitely been hard, things that I find difficult to deal with. Yeah. But I've thought about like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, no, I need to do this representation. Like, I need to stick it out. Yeah. Because the day that I work with like other engineers and other female engineers, it's so nice to work mm. with teams that people, where people look like me and yeah. are like me and are relatable. Update on the dating. <laughs> oh stuff. gosh. Appreciate uh, all of your effort in turning this stuff around. Basically. Yeah. It's pretty urgent. Yeah. It sounded pretty. It was dumb. kind of, it was kind of like, doing. yeah, cancel all your plans. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you're doing.